All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave, back again here talking real music in real time for some real people out there, just like you, just like me. Uh, Chicago, the band, has made yet another personnel change, and they probably are going to make another one uh, if what I think is happening is happening. Uh, First of all, they acquired... Um, keyboardist Lauren Gold not too long ago, who used to be kind of a backup musician for the band. Uh, He joined the band when Lou Pardini left. But now uh, bassist Brett Simons has left the band. Uh, He was with the band uh, starting uh, when Neil Donnell took over on lead vocals. Uh, They had to bring in a bassist because Neil Donnell doesn't know how to play bass, which is kind of a tragedy because Chicago historically has had very good bass players who can sing the tenor vocals, Uh, starting, of course, with the best of them, Peter Cetera, who was not only a great vocalist, but a fantastic bassist. Uh, Jason Sheff did that role extremely well and wound up also being a very strong bassist. And then Jeff Coffey, who was the most recent uh, in the line of singing bass players, uh, Jeff Coffey was also a very strong bassist and a great singer. So when Danelle comes in, they've got to bring in somebody who can play bass. So uh, obviously, uh, the ledger for uh, paying members in this group gets larger, where you have to have two guys who can come in and replace one guy, which is kind of a a sad situation because I think Chicago should have taken a little bit more time and found somebody who could play bass and sing. Well, they may have found that person. His name is Eric Baines. Now, Eric Baines does sing. Uh, I'm not sure, though, if his voice is a tenor, tenor vocal or a you know, a baritone or somewhere in the middle. Um, Eric Baines has worked with a lot of smooth jazz artists, people like Eric Marienthal and Greg Karukas. And there's a whole huge list of other musicians he's played with, including Dwight Yoakam, which is kind of a sort of a left field thing. But, uh, you know, you play bass and you learn many different styles. And Eric Baines, I think, is more of that bottom end, smooth jazz, funky uh, style, which I think would fit Chicago really well. Um, The question is, will he be singing any vocals uh, in light of Lauren Gold, who quite honestly just isn't working as a vocalist in this group? Um, His voice isn't great. And in addition to that, Uh, You need the point counterpoint, the baritone sounding vocal with the tenor sounding vocal. Uh, This band does not sound good when they do songs like Hard Habit to Break. It's actually rather painful. And any of the Chicago tribute bands out there that I've heard and seen have a better grasp on those songs right now because they know they need to farm this out to somebody who can sound like Bill Champlin or Lou Pardini or Terry Kath. Um, those vocals, I mean, are very important to the overall sound of the band. If you want to go see a karaoke concert, right, with somebody whose voice doesn't match what the original vocal sounds like, that's an easy thing to do these days. But if you're paying hundreds of dollars per ticket to go see this iconic band, and they're unable to present the music the way it was recorded, at least get it somewhat close, then honestly, I'm not sure why you would waste your money doing that. Uh, I'm hoping Eric Baines will add stability to the band. But again, if you look at all the people who have left this group, uh, you've got Brett Simons, the most recent, you got Lou Pardini, you got Keith Howland, um, obviously you got Jeff Coffey and it's a pretty big list of folks now. Uh, Tristan Bowden left the drummer. Uh, I'm just trying to think through all this. 
you know, Walter Perizader technically retired, even though the band didn't talk about that for a very long time. Uh, the old timers are really uh, holding this together because some people will go to see Robert Lamb and Jimmy Pankow and Lee Lochnane, which is which is good. That's a good thing. I'm glad you're going to go see those old timers, but you need a core band. You need a rhythm section. Uh, their drummer is OK. Um, that's Walfredo Reyes Jr., who just kind of moved over from percussion to drums. But nowhere near the talent level of a, a Tris and Bowden or a Danny Serafin, for that matter. Uh, drumming in this group is really important. And they've kind of made this like the, you know, Santana Transit Authority a little bit when it comes to the percussion and the drums. Um, Danny Serafin was a different style. And uh, Tris and Bowden uh, really brought stability to the drum kit and a sound that I think was reliable no matter what style the band was playing through, whether it was their 80s material or 70s material um, or new material or even stuff from the late 60s. Uh, Tris had the goods. He was the guy that could deliver, and it's sad that he left. So, you know, there's this bus number two thing, Keith Howland. I forgot about Keith Howland. He left. So there's this bus number two thing that is developing kind of like an offshoot band of all these people who've left Chicago, right? And what's weird to me is they're all willing to get out there, get together and keep going, but they weren't willing to keep going with Chicago. I don't know if maybe Brett Simons will want to, uh, you know, join this uh, bus number two, probably not because he was there after bus number two. And I don't think they need another bass player, right? If uh, Jason and uh, Jeff, I don't know if Jason would be involved in bus number two, but definitely Jeff Coffey. So they've got it covered. I think it's going to be like Keith Howland. It might be Lou Pardini. Um, uh, essentially enough guys to go out there and, and tour, right? And uh do a Chicago set, maybe record some of their own material. But again, Eric Baines joining Chicago. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, the philosophy of this band, and I'll wrap it up here because again, I'm a little under the weather today. Uh, the philosophy of this band, even in their documentary is there's no one person that you need to focus on. We are a band. We are a collective. Nobody is more important than anyone else. There's no front man. There's no, you know, extra attention given to, say, Neil Donnell here, which uh, they found, by the way, in Neil Donnell, they, they found the ultimate team player, somebody who's, who's really not going to garner any additional attention because he isn't, okay? And that's why, though, you need a supporting cast of people. Lauren Gold does not sing that well. Uh, he may sing well in a different context, but this is just not, you know, what it it's supposed to be anymore. You're supposed to have a guy on keyboards who sounds like Bill Champlin, right? And they don't. So I get the whole, we're not going to be, you know, this band where there's a celebrity in the band. And, but Robert Lamb, technically is like your default celebrity in the group followed by Jimmy and Lee. That's, that's it. Cause they're the old timers. And uh, apparently um, people are showing up mostly for that. Uh, like I said, in another video, if they decide to just retire, then what they ought to do is find players at these positions who can deliver the sound that this band used to have. And that's possible because again, there are tribute bands out there. Beginnings is a great band out of New York state uh, or New Jersey up in that region. Also uh, Leonid and friends, not sure if they're ever going to be uh, welcomed to the United States the way uh, they were before, but um, they're out there and they do a spectacular job uh, really just getting every nuance and every note correct. 
Whereas now you've had so many transplants out of Chicago and departures that I guess the casual audience doesn't care, but somebody who's followed this band for a very long time, I look at this and I just kind of get depressed. I'm like, really? Um, I really do think they need to find a singing bassist who can sound like Peter Cetera again. That should have been the goal and auditions should have been ongoing. If they didn't find someone, keep going with the personnel you have and then find someone and then plug that hole, fill that position because you really can't skimp on that whole thing. They've gone in with Neil Donnell. They've got a new album coming out. I believe that has been you know, completely done with Donnell on vocals. They recorded, I believe, some Christmas music with Neil Donnell. So um, yeah, they've just decided that Neil is the guy. But again, uh, this whole situation to me seems like it's not the best solution to their problems. But yes, they're still selling tickets. They're probably still selling out shows. And many people don't even know who's in this group anymore. And with so many personnel changes, it's very hard to keep up. So you have to keep you know, checking the website uh, week to week, uh, check the concert stage when somebody does their uh, fan friendly video and uploading it to YouTube. And you'll say, huh, who's that guy? That doesn't look like uh, Lou Pardini. It's Lauren Gold, you know, and then it's like, what's going on with this band? So it may be a tough working environment. I've made this statement a couple of times. Bottom line with Chicago is this may not be the best working environment. And uh, we don't know why Brett Simons left, but he is no more, at least with Chicago. Uh, maybe he got a better offer or maybe he just um, went the way of bus number two. So in any event, that's the video, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me today. I will be back at some point and I'll see you then.